Chapter eight brings us now into two sample hypothesis tests. So this first section and scenario that we're looking at is when we have independent samples, so two different groups, and we do still have our population standard deviation for both groups. So the first thing we need to define is what does that mean to be an independent sample? Because that's what this section is talking about. Technically, there's two different kinds of methods here. We've got independent samples and we have dependent, also known as paired or matched samples. Independent samples means that these are two separate groups that we are comparing. So they are not related to each other at all. Um, you could think of it as perhaps like Florida versus Georgia, two different states, right? Dependent sample would be the exact same group being measured twice. So maybe like a pre-test score and then a post-test. It's the same individuals taking the item twice or being measured twice. Um, another one would be like a before and after, maybe doing a new workout regimen. Those would be dependent samples. So this section's specifically going to be working with independent but the first couple examples we have are just to check to make sure we understand and can see the difference between independent and dependent. So here's a nice little visual. Sample one and sample two under the independent have nothing in common. These are different people, for instance, in each group. They can also have different sample sizes. They don't have to have the exact same number. When it is dependent, they will have the same sample size between the two groups because they are the same people. So each dot would exactly line up to somebody in the second sample. So here's an example. Sample one is the triglyceride levels of 70 patients. Sample two is the triglyceride levels of the same 70 patients after using a triglyceride lowering drug for six months. The key word here is that they are the same people. So this would be dependent. Example two, sample one, the scores for 38 adult males on a psychological screening test for ADHD. Sample two, the scores for 50 adult females on a psychological screening test for ADHD. So your clue here is that they are two different groups. We've got males and females. And again, they could have the same sample size or they could be different. But if you see off the bat that they are different numbers, that is going to be an independent sample. Independent sample could have the same or different number of sample sizes. Now that we are working though with two samples, just to reiterate, we still have the same hypothesis writing as we did before. So we're still writing our null hypothesis as our statement of equality. So all of our symbols with an equal sign and our alternative hypothesis is all of our statements of inequality. They are still going to be paired as complements. So you can see the way they pair up on this next slide here. You've got your equals not equals, your less than or equal with a greater than, and your greater than or equal with a less than. What's new though, is that we're not comparing our mean to a number, we're comparing the mean to the other mean. So for each one of these problems, we're going to be using mu1, mu2, or if it's a proportion, we would use p1 and p2. But otherwise, it's the same figuring out how to use which symbol, and it's going to be the same way of figuring out the claim, which one of those matches the wording of your problem. Now, for this section, we're talking about a two-sample z-test when we have an independent sample. So in red are the things that you're going to be looking for. Your population standard deviations are known for both groups. It's going to say that these are randomly selected. It might say independent, or you might be able to just figure that one out on your own. So depending on the scenario, sometimes it's very clear if we're talking about cats and dogs. Um, again, Florida, Georgia, high school seniors and high school freshmen you should be able to look at the scenarios and be able to tell whether it's independent or dependent just in case it doesn't tell you clearly. And then the last one we're looking for is normally distributed or sample size at least 30. Now, once we've met all of these criteria pieces, 
The formula for this section is down here at the bottom, kind of squeezed in. The big thing is the top of the formula is going to be the same for the next few sections. What's really changing for each one of these is what's on bottom. So how we find that standard error piece. So we'll see those two put together on the next slide in a second. Going through the steps, we're going to check all of our conditions first. Make sure we have all those pieces. That's what's letting us know that we are doing a Z test here. We're going to write our hypothesis and state our claim. Our level of significance is going to be given to us. And then we plug into inverse norm, whether it's alpha or half alpha, depending on our sketch. Make sure you make your sketch and mark that shaded area on there for your rejection region. And then here is the formula. That is the whole formula put together. We've got our the difference of our sample means minus the difference of our population means over our standard error. Then we check to see if we are in the rejection region or the fail to rejection region. And then we write our conclusion sentence. All right, let's put it all together. Here's our example. A credit card watchdog group claims that there is a difference in the mean credit card debts of households in California and Florida. The results of a random survey of 250 households from each state are shown at the left. The two samples are independent. Assume the population standard deviation is 960 for California and 845 for Florida. Do the results support the group's claim? Use a level of significance of 0.05. And then you are also given a nice little chart that organizes the rest of the information you needed, your sample means and your sample size. So first thing we've got to look for is our conditions. One of the first ones you should always look for is what kind of standard deviation you are given. So in this case, we are given a population standard deviation. It tells us that these are random. If it wasn't clear that this is independent, it does say it on here, but keep in mind we're talking California and Florida, two different states. So we should be able to tell that's independent. And then the last one we're looking for is whether it is normally distributed or a sample size bigger than 30. If you look in your chart, both groups are bigger than 30. So both our samples are greater than or equal to 30. Those pieces together let us know that this is a Z distribution. So now that we know it's a Z, we know our formula from this section and we will use inverse norm for our critical value. Now we're gonna to move to the next slide so we have a little bit more space. But before we do, make sure you note we've got our sample means, our population standard deviations and our sample sizes, all of which we need for our formula. We've got our level of significance in here. And in order to write our hypothesis, go back to the beginning to what the claim is. So our first sentence says the group is claiming that there is a difference in the means. There is a difference. That phrase difference pairs with the symbol not equals. So that's the one that's going to be our claim. That one we know goes in HA. So let's write it. HOHA. We're talking about the difference of means here. So mu1, mu2. And because it says there is a difference, that's the not equals that goes in HA. Our complement is equal for HO. And again, our level of significance was 0.05. We can make the sketch of our curve. Since our HA is not equal, it's both tails being shaded. Because there are two tails being shaded, we're going to cut our alpha in half. I'm going to make a little note there, alpha over 2. So we're going to be plugging in 0 0.025 into inverse norm. This is giving you your critical value. And because it's both tails, we want both positive and negative. Round it off to 4 we get 1.9600. So we can label that on our sketch. We can mark the shaded areas as both reject. If we end up with something in the middle, then we fail to reject. Those are our regions. So 
So let's jot out our formula here. Difference of our sample means minus the difference of our population means. The sum of our two population standard deviations, they're each squared over their sample size, and that's all underneath the square root on bottom. So we can start plugging in. We have our two samples. What you're not given is any population mean. So that's reserved for a spot where if we know there's an innate difference between the two groups. So it might say something like California is always 500 more than Florida or something along those lines. The problems that you're going to be seeing that pop up, we're not going to have anything to plug in back there. So your population means we're going to be plugging in zero. And then on bottom, you have what you need for your standard deviation squared over sample size, and then your other group, standard deviation squared over sample size. Now you do wanna get in a good practice of typing this all in at once in your calculator, hit enter, round that answer off to four decimal places. This is the number that we're going back to your sketch to check. 1.85, it's not quite in that, oh wait, that's positive. So it's over here, not quite in the shaded area. So we put fail to reject. That is the decision we are making. The last thing we need to do is write our conclusion sentence. At blank percent level of significance. So in this case, our level of significance is 5%. They're blank enough evidence. So fail to reject means we use the term is not. That's where that's coming from. Enough evidence to blank the claim. This one is coming from where your claim is at. So when our claim is HA, we use the term support. So we support the claim that. I'm going to put dot, 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 but I'm going to hop back to our previous problem. We would fill in everything from that first sentence after claims that. So from here all the way to our period. So it claims that there is a difference in the mean credit card debts of households in California and Florida. Again, it's telling you mean. It's telling you who we're comparing and what we're talking about, as well as that inequality term. So it has all those good little nuggets of information in there.